when last we left our intrepid adventurers... They were stabbing Corblin we in were, the face. We were stabbing Corblin in the face and then fighting undead monstrosities. Mm. Corblin was down to a quarter health. Yeah. Uh, which is still a lot. How many and did he start with? I, well, I just revealed this at the end, but it was uh, 2,000. <coughs> so he was down to 500 hit points. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And slightly less. Four, like 487 yeah, or something. Okay. But For a completely helpless foe, he was still pretty hard. <laughs> pretty hard to... Yeah, it didn't help. He, he was he was invulnerable half the time. Yeah. The machine would would switch to invulnerable mode and then summon a bunch of monstrosities. Yeah, where yeah. where we had left off was um, the he had just I think he was just about to exit invulnerable. No, he was about to enter. I think he had just entered it. He just entered it. Yeah. And, yeah. But some undead spawned or something. Yeah. yeah there was some. I remember you. you were Every describing time, different yeah, types there of undead. Was, there were really nasty ones that you were worried about. Yeah. Oh yeah. The the, the shades were yeah. particularly scary. The shades had like they could teleport all over the place. They had this thing that made you hit your allies, and so they were turning our strengths against us. And if we missed when we tried to hit our allies, they did sixty ongoing necrotic damage. <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah, what? yeah, yeah. <laughs> the uh, yeah. What would happen is the the machine would charge up for a round, and he was invulnerable. And then it would discharge. It would spawn a whole crap ton more undead, and he would be vulnerable for a round. And then mm-hmm. that would just repeat. I was just trying to remember exactly where the session left off, yeah. but it was he was he had just discharged, and now was charging up for the yeah. first round. Yeah. And there was more undead spawning, and it was clear that like they had only killed like. Well, actually, I don't know if they killed any of them. They wiped out all the zombies. Yeah, zombies are like minions, whatever. Yeah. But they hadn't taken down a single one from the previous round, and now there's, like, ten more. Yeah. To be fair, last round, rather than take down the undead, we used them against Corbett. Mm. We, we used a bunch of abilities that, <laughs> yeah. like... Pulled monsters together and then dominated them and made them hit each other, but we all had them hit Corblund. Oh. So we Corblund summoned a crap ton of undead and then we had them all hit Corblund. So yeah. that was nice. That's pretty cool. But on the downside, it didn't get rid of any of the undead. So yeah. um, it's, it's, one thing to note: sixty sounds like a lot, but they're playing with double damage to make fights take less. Oh, time. okay, yeah. okay, okay. That makes more sense to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's still a lot. It's still I mean, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> My bloody value, I think, for my character is 87 or something like yeah. that. So, wow. yeah, at max, I'm 170. Yeah, it's, it's a third of your so, health. Yeah, I'm, I'm just ka-doom, 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 done. Um, uh, it shows how slow the fourth edition gets to this level. It's Even with the double damage rules, it still took three sessions to do this fight. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, it was like a set piece combat yeah. with complicated elements. So, mm-hmm. this is one of the biggest so, reasons why I hate DD4. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, the, the fights. All the big complexity and stuff allows for role play e kind of fun stuff to happen as well. It's not just wearing away at each other the whole way. Uh, so I think we actually we're actually not super screwed the first round because a whole bunch of the undead were still stunned. So yes, for the first right. round, it was the undead's turn. But fortunately, all the really tough ones were still stunned from the stuff we had done last session, mm. which was, you know, we make them attack Corblund, and then they're stunned for a round afterwards, right. or something like that. So most of them didn't attack us that round. It was just maneuvering to, to get us next yeah, round. The zombies but mostly couldn't reach, because they were super slow. The new undead that spawned did do some attacks, and I remember uh, there were some big damages that went on, but mm-hmm. no one went down, but there was... You know, like another yeah. one of those skeletons that explodes and oh, bones. Oh, those guys. Got yeah. them and, like, did tons of damage to them all. and Nailed us in place again. Yeah. I think that also I rolled up poorly. Like, I had a couple shades try to do their, mm. their like, yeah. really terrible attack and they both missed and that kind of thing. So mm. it wasn't yeah. too bad. But the party also was in trouble because even though Corbin was down to a quarter health, they had blown, like, all their dailies, mm. all their encounter yeah. powers. Like, there were, people had almost nothing left. Right. Yeah. Um, and he still had 500 hit points. Yeah. So... I had used up all my majestic word healing type mm-hmm. stuff, and I'm the party healer. Right. So I figured this this session I was going to be... I, I busted out the potion bandolier, mm. uh, and I figured I would spend most of the combat just using my unseen servants to deliver potions to people. Right. Because it turns out an unseen servant can administer a potion. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out they're strong enough for that. Yeah, well, they can carry 100 pounds, but it's more that they can do simple act- activities such as administering a potion. So, yeah. And this would have been the, the perfect uh, fight for Gil's version 
Gil, Gil's version of his his encounter power, which is the rolling echo. Mm, yeah. Because it lasts forever as yeah, long as there's something to hit. Around. Yeah. 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 Well, well it was something to hit, that's for sure. Oh yeah. The undead were spawning way faster than we were killing them. Yeah. So I think then the undead did their round and they tried to kill us and they hurt us but they didn't kill us. And then it was our round again. I, I remember one thing that was important oh. too is um, there was one Warforge left, the one that, oh, that I befriended. Guy. And it just so happened I kind of randomly spawned them. I had these spawn locations and I rolled the dice and whatever. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them happened to spawn over on this side. and. The closest target was that Warforged, and they just went for the closest target. Right. Mm -hmm. So he actually helped them a lot. He died that round. Yeah. <laughs> but he helped them a lot because he was the cannon fodder. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually a ghoul got him and like ripped him apart and started like sucking out the weird like fluids that... Right. The, yeah. War, war flu, yeah. war Warforged forged fluids. Yeah, because yeah. you know, they have organic components, yeah. so... Just so apart. he helped us one last time. And then it was our round, and was Corbland vulnerable that round? Uh, he, it was your round, and, uh, well, no, Corbland was invulnerable that round, but I think most people readied action. Yeah, we, we didn't do a whole lot. We readied our actions. Actually, I think um, Hank and Croesus attacked the undead. Because they actually took down a whole bunch of them. Yeah. I, I, wasn't it Croesus' thing that ended up... Oh, shoot, I remember we do? cleared away that crowd that we gathered to Corblin. There was a big crowd around Corblin, and a lot of them had, had taken some damage, but none had gone down. And both Hank and Croesus continued attacking them, and just happened to, like, mm -hmm. just kill, like, five of them. Yeah. So... Yeah, and then it was another undead round, and I believe Cricket went down that round? Oh yes, so the undead then yeah. were unfettered, there was no warforge, they weren't stunned, mm -hmm. and they just, like, piled They on. massacred us, it was terrible. Yeah. Um, um, the, um, yes, Cricket went down. I, I don't remember exactly, because it was two down. weeks ago now. Yeah. Cricket went down, <laughs> Sam Sorry, didn't... I was talking to Colin. Yeah. Cricket went down, Serendipity went down, Yeah. Gerard went down. Oh, wow. Yeah, Hank All and Croesus left. were left up. Yeah, and they were both... No, Hank was bloodied. Croesus had taken damage, which is unusual. unusual. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I don't think... He's 50-50. But he was still Croesus, so yeah. we weren't too worried about him going down. Yeah. It was just that... He, he, though he did get an attack by the Shade that not, no one had taken yet, mm -hmm. he, he had a status effect where he could not heal. Oh yeah, that. <laughs> Fortunately, he doesn't really take much damage in the first place, but still. Uh, yeah, oh, he also oh, oh. he can still take temporary. Him all in a room and all he, shovel. He pointed out to me afterwards that he has this. No mushroom. He has this feat called Overheal, where if he ever gets healing that he can't, uh, that's like already hitting his maximum, mm -hmm. he just takes it as temporary hit points. Mm -hmm. And so he was like, I'm pretty sure that would work for this anyway, so... Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't concerned. <laughs> but basically, Croesus was the only guy who was like, I think I can last another round. <laughs> every, every, everyone else was like, you know, we're, we're dead. Uh, right, yeah. And, and I basically, I, I summarized it. Yeah, next round... We kill Croesus, uh, sorry, not Croesus. <laughs> we kill Corbland, yeah. or we die. Right. Yes. I, I think at the end of that round, Serendipity was up because Cricket, or someone, gave her a potion, yeah. and then Cricket went down, or something. Right, somehow. something like Some, that. No, no, I, no, what happened? Um, someone, 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 I think we arranged this, this sequence where someone would bring Cricket up, and then Cricket would bring... Like that's right, know, yeah. During, during like that, that round, but that actually didn't actually happen yeah, before that yeah. stuff happened. So the only people who were really available at the beginning of the round were um, Croesus and Hank. You're right. And um, I don't remember if Hank tried to do something or missed. I don't know if he. I think he did. And Serendipity. Oh, she had raided an action before she went down, and she shot magic missile because that's the best thing she had left. <laughs> yeah. <Aww. laughs> And wow. everyone was yeah. like, oh, it's Serendipity's turn. Now the tides are going to turn. She's like, pew! <laughs> <laughs> pew! <laughs> now we're in trouble. Yeah. Um, anyway, mm. she, um, Croesus did an attack, and of course it's a coup de gras, so he gets another crit. Um, I don't remember if there's any particular details about it. It was a headshot. Oh, right. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> More face. Yeah, so I, no, he no. got face and face, and then this time he got head. So he had uh, okay. broken yeah. through from the face to the head. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And so... Um, uh, basically, everyone is, is down except for Croesus and Hank. 
And Hank missed. <laughs> I think he missed. I don't think Hank did anything. I don't think Hank actually go. I think Croesus went first. Oh, right. Croesus went first. This is the round where you summarize, like, either we kill Corblin now. Yeah. If, if, if Corblin doesn't die this round, then he goes invulnerable again and summons more undead. And we haven't dealt with the undead from the last summon, so we're dead. Yeah. We won't even have the opportunity to run away. Right. Which would be the, the other option. I mean, Cricket will be fine, because she'll come back to life again, but, you know. So Croesus takes the first turn, and he hits Corblin, and it's a crit. And he rolls an extreme crit, and he rolls the top extreme crit, which is the head. So he went through the face, into the head, right. and he rolled tons of damage, and he killed Corblin. Oh, wow. Yeah. He, like, did 400 some? Yeah. Some, no, someone had already taken Yeah, we had taken some damage already. I can't remember wow. how, but, but he was the one that delivered the, the killing blow. How, how wow. appropriate. Which is good, because he really hated Corblin. Yeah, Every, and everyone else was just sort of like, Corblin's a historical figure we know about. We know he's a bad guy. But, you know, we don't have a personal stake in that. Well, I mean, they're not being spammed every day. Yeah. So, fortunately, we had previously established that Corblin was a supporting boss. Mm. And so as soon as he died, we knew. We knew, we knew that... Phase 2 was going to approach. Well, we, we knew that if we killed Corblin, all the undead would disappear. Mm. So... Yeah, so we were we ignoring the undead was also a strategic, you know, made strategic sense as well as just yeah. you know, got to prioritize. Corblin died and all the undead disappeared, and all the warforged had also been killed. So the room was just suddenly empty, <laughs> <laughs> except for dying pieces. Yeah, well, you know, we, we, we do a bunch of second winds and, and stuff like that. So, if I recall correctly, of course, you know, we're PCs, first instinct, big evil artifact, smash! But, Cricket being Cricket, I was like, wait, let's not smash big evil artifact, maybe we can use it for good. And the party actually agreed to, con to consider that, and I was like, huh, we we'll use it for good. And so we do some study of the artifact, and while we're studying it, Cricket disguises herself as one of the Warforged, so that if anyone comes to the door, she'll be like, it's okay, we already have some, send them along. And that actually worked. I can't remember exactly when the Warforged showed up to see what was going on. But, um, you know, I, I bluffed them and t sent them on their way. <laughs> so we had all the... We had a lot of time to, do, to work with this device. And it's fine here, just a reactor leak. Yeah, exa exactly. I said the exact those exact words. <laughs> I made that reference. Wow. So serendipity sort of figured out, hey, this Mental thing... Trotter Malor. Malor and the Topper Towers. She realizes that you can send this, you can throw this soul antenna into reverse and suck all the undead souls out of the forest and send them on their way. The thing is, the device only works if you've got a, like, epic level soul manipulator type mm -hmm. guy strapped into it. So you can't oh. currently turn it from suck to blow. We can. <laughs> because we have ah, space balls. We have the shepherd of souls with us. Oh. So we strap serendipity into the machine. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And we throw we we turn the lever the other way. We change it from evil to good. And she does the big dramatic, like, screaming with eye, with uh, lasers shooting out of her eyes while she's strapped in the machine, and, and the souls go whoosh through her, and, and we spend, like, an hour pumping souls the other direction, mm -hmm. using serendipity to power our infernal machine. <laughs> you put an infernal machine in reverse, is it a fernal machine? It's a fer it was a ex a external. Yeah, it's external. No. Mm. Yeah. External. Or is it, you put the in behind the fernal. Now it's fernal and or infernal backwards. <laughs> infernal means fernal. What a country! Yeah. Anyway, flammable means flammable. <laughs> so, um, our initial thought was we were just going to be like clearing away that undead forest that they were using to make more warforged out. But it actually worked even better than that. Mm -hmm. It turns out. We sucked the souls out of all of the Warforged that had been made over the past 300 years. Oh, jeez. Basically everything that machine had been done. Yeah. All, all those souls were prevented from going on to their eternal rest, and mm -hmm. instead were turned into ghosts to power Warforged. Those, all those Warforged, mm -hmm. 
collapse. So Souls go on to their eternal rest. All over mm-hmm. the world, there were, all over the world, there were warforged that were like screaming and having their souls ripped out and shriveling up and collapsing. <laughs> Is this the plan that you you mentioned to me that you didn't expect them to do? Yeah, no, not at all. I, uh, but it's sort of like, <laughs> I'm like, are we the baddies? <laughs> but it was actually worked out quite well. It was very targeted. If you think of it as getting rid of ghosts, then it's... Yeah, you were yeah. Ghostbusters. Oh. I don't know. I was a little conflicted because, you know, now now I've swung back in the other direction. I'm like, okay, Warforged are actually like domestics after all. <laughs> because they're not actually living souls. They're just automatons that have a soul haunting them. Mm-hmm. And if they could somehow breed, then that would work. But they can't breed, so, yeah, it's whatever. I'll see if I can do something with this machine later. Because the party didn't destroy it in the end. They left it behind. Mm-hmm. So anyway... Yeah, we, we thwarted the obelisk's world-destroying plan. We Fully. We hadn't expected to fully thwart it. We figured, you know, it's just, we'll make it so that when the obelisk starts massacring the entire population, it won't be like making more warforges out of them, at least. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. So, after we'd done that, we left the facility and started heading off to try and find, you know, where the actual obelisk was. Because we'd thought the obelisk was here, but it's not. We still need to confront the obelisk. You only killed the sub boss. And yeah, and and so uh, you know, as we're walking through the undead forest, it's a dead undead forest now. Right. And there's all these these shriveled husks of warforged mm. curled up everywhere, like you know, dead spiders or something. It's kind of creepy. I'm trying to remember if there's anything else we did. We got all our encounters back, which is nice. Mm. I don't think we got our have we got our dailies back. Not no, yet. we haven't. We're in a rush back. because right now, because mm. you've, you've recently time traveled. The obelisk can't predict mm. your every move. Yeah. But soon, the meta time will catch up, and then he will be able to. Mm-hmm. So we may have to put, face the obelisk with no dailies again. Mm. Except I still have timeless track and Mithrendane in, in, my, in reserve. <laughs> I've held on to that. Send the obelisk to the place where things don't exist are. Mm-hmm. Or something. Or something. We'll see what I do with that. Put him in timeout. Yeah. But yeah, we make our way down a secret path that we uncover. And we find this this giant fortress on a crag of rock or something like that, if I recall correctly. And we're like, ah, okay, that looks much more impressive. It's not just a wooden dome in the middle of a forest. Probably the obelisk is in there. And there's tons of warforged there as well. That yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. So they, now, they must be. Dead? No, they must be the original type. Because yeah. You know. yeah, after we did that. I, like, started using sendings to get in contact with uh, the Im- Imperial forces that I'd been trying to coordinate. Mm-hmm. And they were reporting that, yeah, most of the Warforged just collapsed and died for some reason, and, and the rest of them are fleeing. Mm-hmm. Run! <laughs> I should probably have suggested that they, they chase and kill as many of those as they can, but, mm-hmm. yeah, whatever. I wasn't expecting to fight a global war anyway, so... <laughs> it's okay to take a breather. Global war on Warforged? Mm-hmm. But that's where the session ended. Um, so next session, we're going to go and face the obelisk for realsies with, like, no dailies. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, are you really? Yeah. Mm. You're not even going to take a break? We're in a hurry. It's. I think it'll probably be more advantageous to us to, to fight Surprise. it without it being able to predict us, mm. but without dailies, mm. than the other way around. Actually, we leveled up, so I got a new daily, which means I do have a daily. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Level wow. 29. Mm-hmm. Wow, level 29? Yep. We're going all the way. Oh, God. Mm. That's crazy. <laughs> we went there the long way around. Had a six years of game. Yeah. 1,500 for cricket. Wow. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Jeez. 1,506 now. <laughs> you know... I never thought that I'd be crossing Corbland off my list of things to fix so quickly. I thought I'd have to, you know, fix the world's wound. Oh, and first I have to save the world from the obelisk, apparently. And there were a bunch of other stuff, things that we've already saved the world from, but I didn't think I'd get around to Corbland because, you know, the Oblin aren't really about revenge. Even though he did kill everyone I loved and destroyed my entire life and is ultimately responsible for me being crazy for my life. And 
I didn't think I'd get to stab him in the face for for Chris and for for Kim and for for Danik and for Fism and again and again and not that I'm vindictive, mind, but it's good to get the chore done. He's not going to hurt anyone ever again. Dude, we just killed Corblin. Well, Cross is dead. And that's awesome. Well, I wasn't even expecting him to be here, but he's here. He, and the, the thing and the zombies and we killed him and then we used it to like fix all the the souls and we destroyed almost all of the warforged that's awesome I hate those guys it's so satisfying that my friend Croesus was able to have a face off with his enemy <laughs> get it face off <laughs> Oh, that was really satisfying. We did it. We defeated Corbland. That was not something I ever thought I would ever say. Wow, I, I, I feel like this is really noteworthy. Yeah, I, 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 I think I get a name out of this. This we should come. <laughs> um, what should I call? I know. From now on, I'll be Serendipity Van Gold Strider, Malor, Toppler of Towers, Slayer of the Butcher of Brackenridge, Shepherd of Souls, Strider Through Time, Doom Delayer, Salvation of Children, Star Lord, End of the End, Conduit of Redemption. Cricket, do you hear that? <laughs> yes, you funneled millions of souls through yourself. I think I dodged a bullet there. I have been fretting about how this was going to turn out. Because you see, I went and stole the communication stone from the camp that was preparing to attack the city that contained the Temple of Freedom. And our plan was to find the master communication stone and order a retreat. So I was like, wow, we're going to save everyone except the Temple of Freedom. And I would be responsible for that. But no, fortunately, we blew up everything. Unexpectedly. Hooray! It was truly serendipity. <laughs>